I almost forgot to unmute myself. Oh, all right. Oh, what's up, everybody? How you guys doing? Uh, hopefully you've been having a, a pretty good week. Uh, it's been hectic over here at the at the clown at Casa de Clown, at least mostly for me. I'm kind of really behind on work. I just recorded like two videos earlier today. I got so much stuff to edit and we're going out of town this weekend. So I got to make sure I have everything done by the time we're out of here. All right. So hopefully everybody's having a good week. Uh, I got some folks in here. I know there's a, a couple of you and I appreciate you guys for coming in. Uh, Jacoby Vapes coming in number one. Like the dude even let you know he was number one. Uh, the user abuser. How you doing, buddy? Uh, Lethal Coils. Uh, go check out his channel. They are going to be doing stuff over there. Uh, actually, Lethal, if you want uh, here, uh, let me do something for you real quick, buddy. Uh drop a link for your channel because you are going to have james franklin mr frames janklin vapor on your channel today you guys are going to be doing some stuff i don't know what you guys are going to do but i can't wait to watch it's at like five o'clock my time i think it's uh four wait actually yeah i'm confusing this maybe i'm confusing it but yeah lethal just drop a link to where you're going to have it where you're going to do it and we will catch you guys over there all right um Stu Rep, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Subaru, 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 Nerd Vape. Sorry, I'm just kind of, I'm feeling like that today. Uh, how you guys doing? Uh, I appreciate you guys showing up and, you know, hanging out with me for at least the next half hour to an hour. I don't know how long this will go, but, you know, whatever. We're going to have some fun. I have a beer ready for you guys today. We have lots of advocacy topics and we're going to do all that. Lots to talk about, uh, stuff that's kind of bleeding over from the Omis, things that are bleeding over from um, just a lot of things that have gone on this week. And yeah, it's it's been it's been one of those weird weeks when it comes to a lot of things. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump into some what I've been vaping and see uh, see where we go from there. So yeah, what I've been vaping. Hello. Oh yeah, Mr. Chappie jumping in right as I did the, the, the bumper there. Alright, so what I've been vaping. We're going to go off with the uh, Dull Dime, number 40, Twisted Messes, that Money Dough Drip Tip from DHD. And then that, as always, Psycho Crawler. I, I've stopped vaping this for a little bit, just so like that, that bottle can last me a little bit longer. I think I have one more, but I'm not even sure about that, you know what I mean? Oh, man. Psycho Crawler, just amazing stuff. Uh, up next, I got the uh, Serpent Elevate. Be on the lookout for that. There is a review for that this week. I think it's the Sunday video. I'm going to post it on Sunday. Top of the, I got the, that on top of the uh, Warlock's Guardian. I know, like, this mirror thing kind of sucks, but then, like, it looks proper. It's just one of those weird things. It just it makes it confusing sometimes. <laughs> And in that, I do have from the Artist Liquids, uh, Oh My Pog, which is a pineapple uh, orange guava. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Pretty pretty enjoyable. I'm going to see if I can try it in an RDA and see how that does. And uh, next up, I have the uh, Dog RTA with uh, inside of that, I got the uh, Turkish Harvest, which apparently I need to refill because that sucker is running low. And I got that on top of the uh, Via 240 from Biotech. Seriously love this mod. I've been wanting one forever, and I finally got my hands on one. And my wife stole it. And then I bought myself another one at NVE. So, yeah, awesome stuff. Just really like this mod. A really cool mod. And I don't know why that's giving me such a weird whistly sound. Wasn't doing it up until I did the video. Seriously, up until I started recording the video, which this will be the Friday video, be on the lookout for that. Yeah, it's making weird whistly sounds now. I don't get it. Uh, and then lastly, uh, this guy is kind of going to stay in my rotation for a while because I, I think I'm in love. But uh, the uh, RNV Designs Pontus with the Skyfall RDA on top of that. Just, seriously, it's so tiny. I can't get over how little it is. Loving it. 
And in that, I got Manga Bees from 12 Monkeys. Really good stuff. I am enjoying that juice very much so. Uh, see if I missed anything in chat. No, we are caught up with chat. And uh, yeah, yeah, Lethal Dude, honestly, uh, that's the point of all this is to spread the love, help everybody out because, you know, we are community, at least that's what I've been taught over the last couple of years. And we do not fuck with that, you know. Uh, let's see, user abuser, you are waiting on your Sonic Cleaner to finish run some old school right now. Ooh, dude. Nice. OG Goon. Dude, the Goon is a, an awesome one, dude. On a hexome, which hexome? Cause I got the I got the V2 and I got some of the V3s. I really want to try out that O frame one, but I have four hexomes. Why do I need another one? Like I seriously have four of the V3s and one of the V2s. I really don't want any more hexomes. Like I do, but I don't. Maybe I should sell one and then just make that as a nice trade off. All right, so. We're going to go jump into some beer because, honestly, I'd rather get into the beer before it gets cold or before it gets warm and all that kind of situation. So, yeah, let's do some beer time. We'll say uh, user abuser, the the whole uh, Adore e-liquids, I've still yet to try it. Like, I don't know. I looked at their profiles. They look good, but none of them really seem to appeal me in any way. So I'm just kind of like... I want to, but I'm not fully sure. I'm not like fully sold on the idea of getting their their liquids. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, dude, the 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 stab woods, dude. Oh, uh, actually, last year around tax season, I had the moral dilemma of, hey, I have the money for it, I could buy it, but then I could do so much more with that money, and I was like, no. And honestly, if you go check their site, they, I, last time I looked, they were actually running them about between, depending on which one you were getting, between like five and eight hundred. So they've dropped a little bit. Uh, I don't know if that's still true, but always can check. Uh, if anything, you could always buy a door. You know, get that whole situation going. Uh, let's see. Uh, Stu Reps is rocking a S Rabbit Squonk Mech with a Goon 1.5. Dude, that. Okay, I have a. Uh, I have like an S rabbit. Those, those are awesome, dude. I love the mods. They're really tiny, really cool. Lethal is rocking that, uh, old school ass modus snow wolf with the plume veil 1.5 drag rabbit and, uh, dragon, a rabbit RTA and a rage with a TM 24 pro dude, that TM 24 pro. If you guys have not tried the eclipse caps, seriously, get on it. Just messes. Kent is an awesome guy to meet in person, by the way. I, I kind of had like an awkward moment with him in the elevator at the hotel at NVE. But we got to chit chat. And then, yeah, he was a cool dude. I, I don't know. Personally, I most people say he's weird to talk to. But I think he's my kind of people because I'm a weirdo myself. I'm really like I'm actually like if you actually see me in the wild, I am somewhat of a shy person. I'm really like, hi, <laughs> like I'm really weird, like how I react to people like I'm. Like here, I'm all animated, but it's I'm home. I'm in my comfort space and all that kind of situation. But in public places, I'm really kind of like it takes me a minute to get out of my shell. All right, so beer we have uh we have Armadillo from uh, Armadillo Ale Works Quaker Town Stout. Uh, seriously, I just went to my fridge real quick, grab whatever I could, and seriously, I I, I had a giant grin walking back back here from the fridge i am excited i cannot wait to try this I'm trying to see if there's anything it says uh maple syrup and oats it's an ale brew I'm trying to see what else we have on here 50 ibus keep at 50 degrees 9.5 alcohol by volume which means it, it'll get me a little toasty which you know i'm gonna get a little ranty during the uh advocacy segment so that 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 should work out really well, right? See, dark imperial oatmeal stout pours with a fluffy tan head and is jam packed with notes of roasted coffee, dark chocolate, and nuts. It's brewed uh to is brewed to commemorate the original Quaker Town community and the enriching music festivals and community 
events that are held in Quaker Town Park today. Ooh, okay, fair enough. I'm trying to figure out where 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 is this brewery? I don't like. Okay, they're out of Denton, Texas. Okay, so Denton, Texas is like, I want to say like roughly thirty to forty five minutes away from me, depending on traffic. Uh, I thirty five sucks. If you live in Texas, you know what I mean. I thirty five is like the worst highway ever. Yeah, yeah, lethal. It took me a minute, but hey, uh, after that, get I get over that, dude. I I am just set. Uh, for uh, Stu reps, which eighteen six fifty? Eighteen six fifty. All right. Well, let's go into the poor as Stu, as I wait for Stu Rep's uh, reply on that one. Yeah, I have you guys on this screen, and I have the camera right here with this screen. Which, honestly, I should switch it, but whatever. And there is the uh, tan fluffy head. Oh my god, that that color just makes me so happy. Look at how dark that is. Ooh, there's some some stuff floating in there. Guessing that's the oats. That's kind of cool. It's trippy. It's probably oh for the squonk mat. Yeah, dude, that's what's in there. Uh, it's just rewrapped. Uh, it's a 20s, and I just rewrapped it black, so it's all like super matchy matchy kind of situation there. I tried getting uh like I have some clear wraps. But they sucked and it didn't work out because I wanted to put clear wraps because I knew the cause, uh, I had ordered the Skyfall for this and I was going to put like a clear wrap on this. That way it was clear. So it was like metal, metal, black, black and kind of like matchy matchy situation. But it didn't work out. So I had to put a black wrap on top of a 20S. I actually did two of them. That way I could switch out the batteries, which, hey, this one's this one's fully wrapped. See, that's another 20S just wrapped in black with crap on the wrapping. Alrighty. Oh, for your squonk, mech squonk. Oh, no, yeah. Okay, yeah, dude, 20Ss. Uh, dude, okay, here's the thing with 20Ss. They hit hard and you could uh run really low on them cuz they are a true 30 amp as far as I know. Yeah, YouTube's kind of I don't know what YouTube's doing. I really think they're doing like a massive update right now every youtuber out there knows this they're like messing with how we do things yeah 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 the the yeah youtube's just messing with things and it's just a pain in the ass but um yeah the the s rabbit yeah it's a 3d printed uh kind of boxy thing yeah i have one like somewhere back there it's kind of like closer to like this style of box and yeah dude 20 s's they're they're good it's just like We'll say for like battery life, uh, the 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 VTC 5As kind of went out because they have a slightly more battery life, but even then, not really. But yeah, there's the 20S right there. And um, but if really, it's a 25. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Lethal. I had not checked uh, Mooch's latest stuff on that like i haven't bought batteries in a minute and the only time i check on that is when i'm about to buy batteries and like i'm kind of looking into that at the moment i need to buy more uh 21 700 batteries because i've been buying a bunch of shit with 21 700s and i'm running out of shit okay the the Mo molly cell p26a what's the uh what's the uh ma on that battery though Cause that was the thing. Like, there's like the HP sixes, and those were rated at like 30 amps back then. I don't know what they're at now, but their ma sucked. I mean, it's like 1500, and those were terrible. They like just got decimated easily. And um, yeah, dude, 30 Ts. Unless uh, unless you're running a regulated mod, 40 Ts. So much better because regulated, you don't need that much, but they have insane battery life, like insane, insane. 
Oh, man. Give me a second. I'm sorry. Uh, just taking care of something here. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love you so much. Okay, dude. Wow, that's not bad. Lethal for uh, for the, the Molly Cell one. Uh, yeah, well, okay, Stu Rep, like, with the 25 R's, they're not bad if you're not running low, uh, builds. Like, honestly, like, in this guy, I'm running a, a .31. Same goes for this dude right here. It's a .31. And, um, you know, it is what it is. It's not, as long as you're building safe for the battery, that's all that really matters. That, and make sure your wraps are nice and clean and all that type of situation, so... Just stay safe. That's all I really care about in the end. Like, uh, there's a lot of different battery types that you can use, but just make sure, like I, like I said, you need to stay uh, aware and up to date with like any research battery Mooch has done for us, and any if you can find a way to like do like look up reports for yourself and things like that, I highly suggest it. And if you could share share the knowledge and the wealth on that, please do. All right, so back to beer. Yep, that's just straight up coffee. It's a nice, rich, dark coffee. Ah, see, he lied. 2600 ma. Which, not bad. It's not the greatest, but it's not bad. Uh, Yeah, there's like a hint of chocolate in there, but it's just full dark coffee. Which, for me, it's a happy guy right there. So let's, uh, let's take a, a, a taste of this. Oh, man. Uh, you know, okay. Uh, like, at least from what I've been told, when it comes to coffee, the darker the coffee, the less caffeinated it is. The lighter the roast, the more caffeinated. Unless they mess with it and do something to make it more caffeinated. But that is one dark, dark coffee. Oh, my God. I love dark coffee, but Jesus. I don't know why the hell it had it had me check that right there. Yeah, yeah, uh, go for it, Lethal. Seriously, you you have mod status now, so you can post whatever you need to, buddy. All right, so. Oh yeah, it's a it's a ale stout is what the what the thing here says. But yeah, it's Quaker Town Stout. I mean, seriously. Uh. If you've been following my channel long enough, I love my stouts. Uh, I've been trying to explore other things. I'm getting into ales. I like uh, triples. Gozes are kind of like a thing I'll do here and there. Sours aren't too bad. But, uh, yeah, IPAs is one of those things I've yet to find something I like. So I, I'm still, I'm, I'm trying, but just... Like a lot of people always tell me to go for the Dogfish Head 120-minute uh, IPA. No. That can go to fucking hell. <laughs> not my thing. I hate it so much. I hate that like hoppiness taste you get. It's not my thing. Not my thing. Oh my god, that is just. It it's got that feeling of this has gotta wake me the fuck up. All right, so we're gonna go with the um, for a pairing, we're gonna go with the uh, deep cut psycho curler to start this off. Let's see how this does. Feels like I need to change those batteries. Okay. It's working its way through. Oh, it emphasizes that coffee right the hell away. Oh, man. It just makes it so much. Like, the acidity of the coffee just comes out completely. Like, it just turns into this really acidic coffee. It's like the weirdest thing ever. Dude, Guinness is nice. I like Guinness. Uh, Samuel Adams, I've not explored really much of their stuff since I was like 22. Uh, yeah, dude, it's it's pretty good. I'm liking it. It's, if you love a dark coffee, if you like like coffee as dark as Satan's asshole, I, I say go for it. 
Oh, yeah, that is uh, a descriptive moment right there. I feel very poetic after saying that. All right, next we're gonna we're gonna try to see if this will be enough for this, but we're gonna go with the um, Turkish harvest. Let's see how this goes. Oh man! Again, that just raises up the acidity in the coffee. It keeps raising it and raising it, and I really should have gotten some. Well, actually, I have a bottle of water right here. I need to cleanse my palate because that's just getting a little too intense for me. And that nine point five, I'm feeling it. Ah, uh, let's see. What do we have here in front of us? I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to remember what's what and who. Uh, let's see. We got Turkish maize. We're going to give that a shot. Uh, honestly, when it comes to stouts, you go bakeries, custards, uh, desserts, honestly, just the easiest pairing. You could try fruits and things like that, but that tends to be more like an ale thing or an IPA thing. Uh, even like triples, all that kind of thing. Just kind of giving you some perspective on beer pairings and stuff. Oh man. All right. So let's try this, uh, Turkish, uh, yeah, what is it? The Turkish, Turkish harvest or no? Turkish maize. Sorry. Sorry. But yeah, Turkish maize. Let's give this a shot. Oh, that mellowed it out quite nicely. Okay. So Turkish, har uh, Turkish maize wins that one out. It mellowed it out. It, didn't like increase the acidity the way the other ones did but it just kind of kept that nice coffee feel you kind of taste the chocolate a little bit more really good ah very enjoyable so that's probably gonna be the pairing for this every time i take a swig and i want to take a vape that's staying together uh thanks man uh lethal you're awesome bro seriously you you are amazing uh all right let me uh we're going to go into some news and advocacy topics and such. And yeah, I'll catch you guys there. So advocacy time. All right. So news and advocacy stuff. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You have to do something for yourself. Uh, you can only expect so much of advocacy groups and advocates to uh, push for you. And honestly it's one of those things of you have to fight for your right to vape and if you don't fight then what's the point why are we doing this and all that type of situation i'm gonna move you guys over here you're gonna be right on top of my face so i can actually talk to you guys this way and know what you guys are talking about uh yeah dude like uh, on the uh on the 1.5 try to run like a single uh, that's why, like, a lot of, like, these smaller guys, like, those smaller 22-millimeter flavor banger guys is the most recommended because you're not – you can run, like, a high build on them and you still get massive clouds, massive flavor. Like, seriously, check this out. Uh, the the RNV guy. Like, seriously, and you get, like, a nice kick out of them. And it's just trying to find something that you like and all that kind of thing. I know I've heard good things of the Tabino from uh, Wismac. I've personally not tried it. I probably should, but not. Uh, another good one is the Shogun from Vapor's Cloud, and they're not that very expensive. I think they're like 45 bucks, something like that. And it's a really good little flavor banger guy, and you can run those on those on your like single 18650 Squonker mechs, and they do amazing on them, seriously. Like these are meant for each other. They really are. Seriously, you get good flavor, good everything. You don't have to run like low builds. You don't have to run anything massive. They work out. Uh, if you have like a Goon 22, that'd be even pretty good. Like you could run a high build in that. It's small enough to like you where you could get like very good, like massive build up in there in the chamber since it's so small and all that kind of thing. But yeah, back to advocacy. I'm sorry. I am very easily distracted. Uh, if my wife is still watching, she can tell you. 
Uh, okay, so yeah, advocacy. Uh, 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 like back in shit, what was it January? We went to Oklahoma for Vapors Carnival. Uh, me, my wife, the Garrities, we went there and they had uh, Dave, I can never pronounce his damn name, Gurlitz, Dave Gurlitz, yes, uh, he was on a Billion Lives Matters uh, documentary, if you guys haven't checked that out, check it out, uh, lets you in on the, the behind the scenes on the tobacco industry and what kind of bullshit they pull, and uh, What's it called? And he talked about like, you know, we have to stop being advocates and we need to be activists. We have to be active, actually go out there and do something and just push. We need to show that we are here and we are here to stay and that all of this is meant for a reason or another. You know what I mean? So. Uh, it's one of those weird things that we got to keep fighting and we got to keep up the good fight because otherwise nobody else is going to do it for us. And at that point, you're the one left crying. I'm like moving around some windows here. You're the one left crying and wondering where the hell did all the vape gear go? And it's one of those things that we need to actually do things for ourselves and not wait for a call to action, not wait for this or that and all that type of situation. Uh, As Mr. Lethal Coils put it, do a handwritten letter. Make a phone call. Honestly, take like a minute out of your day and just call and be like hey i am so and so i am in your district i want you to do this this and this uh when it comes to senators when it comes to congressmen they are elected officials we have a voice in that sense when it comes to committee members we're kind of screwed because they're appointed and there's not a whole lot we can do about it but we gotta let them know uh here i'm gonna share a link here if i can find it where did it go here it is okay there's a link and we're going to go over here and you guys can check this out. And this is a link to, uh, that actually lets you find your house representative and you can actually either email them. It has all their information for phone numbers and all that type of situation. Please do your best that you can when it comes to all this. And this is where I'm on the whole, this is bleed through from, uh, vaping with the Omis on Mondays. Cause we talked about this, uh, a while back and all that kind of thing. And that's the thing, you know, yeah, I mean, as lethal put it, you won't get my vote gets, goes a long way. Cause here's the thing they like, it's one of those weird things. Cause a lot of these people do tend to have like other ways of making their money, but they want to be politicians. So a lot of it does rely on us as people and all that kind of thing. And I feel that as vapors in this country, we have a lot of us and we need to band together a lot better and stop all this stupid bullshit, petty fighting over this thing, that thing, that vapor said that thing, that vapor said that thing. Instead of like this whole cult mentality we have, we need to band together and show what true vape fam means, you know, not that, I mean, vapors, we already have a bad reputation as just huge cloud blowing douchebags and that's something that we it's a stigma we need to like beat and we need to push beyond that and show that we're just regular human beings that made one bad decision at a one point in our lives and then decided to do a healthier decision you know i like i tell people i i started vaping in 2012 on 24 milligram on a shitty ego setup and Over the years, I slowly started like decreasing my nicotine intake. I'm down to a three and I might vape a lot because I'm a chain vapor. I'm not going to deny that, but I was a chain vapor at 24 milligram. And as a smoker, I was already bordering onto that. um, I was already bordering onto that third pack a day. So if that tells you to what extreme I was at. I wasn't doing too good. Uh, at two, in 2012, I was 26 years old, and I was already boarding onto that third pack. I am a creature of habit. I'm a creature of addiction. That's why I keep myself from doing certain things because I know myself well enough. But on some other things, I've just gone. I've gone like ridiculous extents, and it, it, I could have ended up not being here today if it weren't for vaping. I'm just saying. I think I would be a lot worse off, and I wouldn't be doing so great. And I think my wife appreciates vaping. I know she does because she tells me I'm not going back to cigarettes. She comes from a family of ex-smokers or current smokers. 
and she's trying to help them out. And we've been talking to her family members and all kind of thing. And it's one of those weird things, like just trying to, you know, educate, especially like the older generation, if they are just set in their ways and they don't want to move on. It kind of does become an uphill battle. But at the same time, we need to show who we are. And uh, let me let me read off some articles real quick. And then from there, we will talk about uh, what happened yesterday in New York, in Albany, because that was some interesting stuff. Uh, if you guys didn't catch it, uh, I will try to post the link here. If not, go check out Clown Crew or Vaping with the Yummies uh, Facebook groups. And I know I posted it there. I know it got reposted a million places. I know Joel, uh, a.k.a. Mr. Just, Mr. Just Right One. He went psycho posting that link on every group because any group me and him are in together. I was just seeing pop ups constantly just bump, bump, bop, bop, bop. You know, it was like the most insane thing ever. All right. Cities, places, uh, city places, a 60 day mortar moratorium on vape shops. Uh, let's see the Lilburn City Council unanimously voted April 8th to suspend issuing any new vape shop licenses for 60 days pending review business practices. The council imposed a moratorium due to inordinate amount of business inquiries related to vape shops or businesses that sell alternative nicotine products. The Atlanta Journal uh, Constitution reported during the hiatus city officials plan to study the sales of vape products and given Given them time to formulate additional regulations. There are no vape shops currently within city limits, but the lawmakers are not attempting to publicly discourage entrepreneurs from investigating opportunities in the city of about 12,000 residents. They are just taking time to make sure the planning and zoning ordinances are better prepared for handling applications, according to uh, Gwinnett Daily Post. Liburn Mayor, Mayor uh, Johnny Chris said 60 day moratorium will allow lawmakers to make well educated decision on eight, eight inquiries and intend to become the first city, uh, the city's first vape shop. All right. So, yeah, dude. Oh, thank you so much, Lethal. You're an amazing human being. Yeah, that's the Albany link. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, seriously, go look at it. It is. Uh, it got intense. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, there was, uh, by the end of it, I think there was over a thousand people watching the, the live stream. And I, I was trying to record videos, but it became a little difficult cause I was more invested in that than videos. I was like, fuck videos. Uh, this is more important. And we were watching it. And even like they acknowledged the fact that we were watching, they had so many people come up. They had like vape shop owners, industry workers, just, uh, show promoter promoters and so many different things. And, uh, I will say the opposing, you know, the people that wanted the flavor ban in Albany to go through, they couldn't be more ignorant. Uh, they had one lady come up and I was just getting so furious and I, I mean, I'll get into it here in a minute. Uh, so yeah, they, they, they're suspending licenses in Georgia or this town in Georgia. I guess that's Georgia. Yeah. So yeah, that that's a very interesting thing, honestly, because you you think they'd be kind of by today's standards they'd be ready, but even then, at the same time, you never know. I mean, that I will say, like, not a whole lot of cities know what they're doing when it comes to a lot of this, nor they know where they kind of want to go with it. So it just turns into this weird go around thing. Uh, I. I'm not going to read these articles. I just know that it's just kind of one of those things that is happening. But like uh, there's a lot of places that are going to be dropping some taxes. Kentucky is one of them and they are going to go. They're going to go crazy with it. Actually, let me just look at what the numbers are looking at. Yeah, by next year, they are hoping to raise taxes on on uh, e-cigarettes and all that kind of thing. So. Be on the lookout for that. And hopefully if they are running any open forums on that kind of situation, try to jump on it and let them know, hey, this is going to fuck over the industry. Not in those exact words. Be more eloquent than I am in this moment. But in all reality, that's really what's going to happen. 
you know. Oh yeah, dude, that that guy that got shared, Stu Reps, that got shared, and I I am happy about that part. Uh, hopefully there was an actual impact and something actually happened, but time will tell on that one. But yeah, uh, watch out for uh, tax increases, which those are actually one of the worst things we are facing at the moment. I know flavor bans is probably number one. Uh, nicotine control, which is something that a lot of people don't really mention because there has been talk about it, but because most people go, well, if they're going to raise taxes, if they're going to like ban flavors, I could just start DIYing. But there's been, you know, speculation of nicotine control. If they start controlling nicotine, then we're just completely fucked. Even DIYers like myself, there's none of this like, cause I mean, the point is to get nicotine and if you can't get nicotine, then like I'm slowly kind of migrating into some zero milligram. I'm trying, but it's just one of those weird things. One of those weird things. Uh, let's see. Hopefully the reversing the youth vaping epidemic act falls on its face and we're screwed as well. Federally. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, that's, they are really trying hard to make sure vaping doesn't survive. And it, like it really looks like I know Gottlieb gave uh, an extension was it to 2022 for uh, companies to register and yada yada yada. But in all reality, they're not wanting us to survive. Yeah, Ohio's trying to change the age thing. So is Texas. There are so many states that are working on that. And personally, I don't care for it. I want it to stay at 18. Uh, I understand 18 year olds aren't smart enough to make decisions for themselves. I understand 18 year olds uh, do dumb things. But then again, I started smoking at 13. So what difference does the age thing make? Uh, If you start asking around to most vapors that are in within the hobbyist end of things, which most of us tend to be when we watch all these YouTube videos and follow all the YouTubers and things like that. uh, What's it called? we tend to like have this one commonality is that we started smoking very, very young with age restrictions. And that's another one. Like I always tell people, I started smoking Marlboro reds at 13. Can you tell me what fucking flavor do those come in? Cause at no point did flavors fucking attract me. It was just the fact that I wanted to try it and it just became something I was like, fuck it. I'm going to keep doing it. And I luckily, well, luckily and unfortunately, uh, going into high school, I already had all this lusciousness right here. So I wasn't even ID'd or carded. Most people thought I was of age. And it's one of those weird things, you know. And it's odd because after I turned 27, I started getting carded. I just don't get that point. I really don't. Maybe it's because things got a lot more stringent. But still, what else can you really expect out of shit like that? You know what I mean? Uh, Yeah, uh, I was going to... I really didn't have a whole lot ready or prepared other than just the, the the reverse, what is it again? The reverse the youth epidemic act. Which here's the thing. I grew up in the 90s. Uh, I was in elementary school from 1992 through what, like 96? No, 90, yeah, 96, 97. So I started like elementary school in 1990. <laughs> I guess I'm not getting into the hobbyist side. I am researching 26 gauge builds, dude. Uh, okay. Here's the deal. Uh, when it comes to like hobbyists, I, uh, I think only hobbyists watch YouTube videos. It's one of those weird things. Cause like, unless you give a shit and you're not just that guy that goes into a shop, buys a smock kit and then just keeps buying coils for that. And one juice that you like, you kind of don't fall into the hobbyists thing if you got like multiple setups and you like rebuilding and you like doing this and that and i know there's some people that like rebuilding that aren't hobbyists because shit i work with one guy that loves rebuilding but doesn't care for anything of like videos doesn't care for any of that the dude loves guns he'd rather do that and uh he but he's still like he's like borderline hobbyist but then like more people are like tend to watch all the videos that they can try to get all the research we tend to be a lot more in tune with what's going on we tend to know about advocacy a lot more and that kind of situation so that's kind of where i like for me at least 
that difference between hobbyist and non hobbyist kind of comes in. Uh, all righty. So let me see back to this over here. Hopefully I'm not getting whitewashed too bad. I'm trying to make sure I, you can still see me because I'm getting a lot of light in here. But if I close it, it's too dark because it's like kind of been like overcast all day, but with like a really weird shine. So it's all weird over here. Uh, so back to the Albany thing. There was a lot of good positivity going on and I enjoyed all that. And I was just happy and just excited to see all that kind of situation. But then there was a... Dude, DIY for e-liquid. Awesome stuff. It's a lot of fun. And you will enjoy the simple fact that you created that. And you're just amazed on like the differences and stuff. Uh, I do have some DIY videos. Do also go check out Wayne from DIY or Die. Uh, Fresh 03. Uh, there's so many more mixers I can't remember off the top of my head. But those are like the big, th like the big number one guys or whatever. Those dudes do an amazing job. I know uh, Fresh 03 does that thing with uh, Addy Tooney on Saturdays, and he even invited me on uh, during the Omi show that we did this past Monday, and hopefully I'll be able to do that sometime soon, because I would like to hang out with Fresh 03. I've not really had the pleasure. I've been on lives with him, but it, it was one of those weird things that I had to leave right as he came on, so it was one of those weird things. Yeah, I'm using that. Uh, I'm using the Logic Tech camera, because that's all I have for now. All right. Uh, if you can tell the delay on things. Um, so, yeah, lots of positivity went on. But they had a couple of people come on that were experts. I use that term very loosely on what vaping is and why they need to make all these laws for it. And they had one lady come on talk about how there's formaldehyde in vaping. She was talking about how... They uh, put, uh, God, what the hell was that? There was like another, there was like another chemical. And I just saw the video before I started the thing. Cause there's people have been posting that clip over and over that they add into vaping. So you get bigger clouds for vape tricking. And it's like, could you be more ignorant? Can you just sling more bullshit? And it was just pissing me off. It was setting me off. And it just, I couldn't even fucking handle it. They had one other chick come on there and she said the whole thing of, we need to pet the children. They're trying to attract this and that. If anything, you know, we need to get rid of vaping and push pills on people. And to me at that point, that clicked on and all I was thinking is like, how much is Big Pharma paying you? Can you please tell me that number? If you want to throw statistics at me, let me know that number. Of all numbers you were throwing around, where is that number? Because how the hell do you just start throwing the idea of slinging pills on people? That is bullshit. And that is just, I couldn't have been more livid. Like seriously, like how I rate I was just, I went into full on silence. I could not try that. Oh no. Yeah. That, that's what they, uh, okay. Here's the deal. Uh, the formaldehyde, there's no such thing. They always ask what's in your liquids. Do you know? Here's the deal. VG. FDA approved PG FDA approved all flavorings FDA approved put them all together in one thing not FDA approved what the fuck uh, I can't remember if it's VG or PG but that's in inhalers that you use for when you're an asthmatic you know one of them is in there PG the only reason that the whole antifreeze thing comes up with PG is because PG is actually in antifreeze. And the reason they added it in the 80s was because people were dumping antifreeze in storm drains. And to make it more environmentally safe, that it would be more water soluble and things like that. They started adding PG to antifreeze. It's not that there is antifreeze in PG, but PG in antifreeze, if that makes any sense. But people don't want to fucking like take that apart and make it into two different things. And I find that to be complete horseshit. Yeah, can you tell I'm getting a little agitated here? Uh, so, yeah, uh, there's so many, like, things that went right with it. And I feel that the vape community just showed the numbers of people and this and that. And I hope they listened to them over the people that said otherwise. Because, seriously, there weren't that many that were for that bill, for the flavor ban bill. And 
even then what they said was complete utter nonsense they even had uh spike i can't remember her last name but her first name was spike and she came on and she said i am the nerd of vaping and i've seen all the studies and a lot of them are wrong a lot of them are right and there's some things that you guys really need to be more aware Oh no, dude, no, no worries, dude. This like I'm very passionate about vaping and I get ranty. Like if you guys ever listen to the Wolf Bite, I uh sometimes Frank actually has to cut out a lot because I start going off about uh advocacy stuff and he has to cut us for time unfortunately and he'll even message me, bro, I need to cut this part out, and I'm like, that's fine, I understand. And even then it's cause I start cussing a lot and as vape radio is kosher with a lot of things, they still try to keep it as family friendly as possible. They let us cuss a little bit, but they, they at the same time, they were like, Just don't go a little too bananas with it. So I, I do get a little bit angry and ranty because that's who I am. I'm a very passionate, angry person. And at least I'm doing it for the right reason. As a kid, I was an idiot and I got angry for the dumbest things possible. Vape break. All right. So, yeah, it just, what's up, DC Rackley? How you doing, buddy? Hopefully you're feeling better, dude. Hopefully you're feeling better because uh, last time we spoke, uh, you weren't doing so hot. And all, all the best for you, buddy. We're talking that uh, Albany uh, open forum thing from yesterday. And I really, uh, and, and that's the thing, like, all I kept thinking, and I even posted it in the comment section during the video, uh, was who has already influenced the way that these people think, the ones that are going to vote yay or nay, who has already gotten in their ear, who's already started like telling them what to vote, who's in their pocket, who's paying who, and that's just one of those things that like, corruption is a thing, and it happens, and it's one of those weird things, and whether it's for the good or the bad, it just, it's going to happen one way or another. It's just hard to defeat. Some people just do not have the integrity or some people just are in a bad spot and they just need it that bad that they are willing to sell their vote. You know, um, I'm trying to remember one thing. Uh, can't remember his name. He was like the big muscly looking dude that like kind of started yelling halfway through what he was saying. And um, uh, one thing that like, you know, he said, he said, we're not big tobacco. We're mom and pops. And you know what? When it comes to vaping, uh, big tobacco has barely gotten their finger in there. And uh, they barely gotten their finger in there. They've only gotten like two or three companies. As far as I know, if they've gotten more, please correct me. But as far as I know, they got like two to three companies, maybe four or five. And they're barely getting into the vape game. But even then, I don't think they care enough to try to keep it alive as long as it needs be. But it's one of those weird things of just in case it keeps going, they're going to keep it going. But the rest of the vape industry, almost everything is either like Chinese companies that have nothing to do with certain things or American companies started by somebody that got into vaping, eventually got into the idea of DIYing, and then eventually got into the idea of, you know what, I can maybe try to make this my career and I will move on into this in my life. I mean, M Turk. Quilter, you know, Twisted Messes, Grim Green, Dwayne. These are guys that like, you know, had day jobs and found vaping, found their own path. And then they moved on into making that their career. I mean, I remember when like Nick flipped the switch from still working a job to going full time YouTuber, full time, all the shit he does now. And it, and I. I'm not going to lie. I would love to do that, but it's a scary thought for me at the moment. Cause I, I have the website up. I try to sell my own juice, my own coils, and I don't make enough sales to really quit. And I would like to, or at least get my coils in the shops and things like that. Cause that one's an easy one for me. Cause you know, we don't have so many regulations on coils, even though coils still do fall under all this. Like even coils are under danger on all this kind of situation, like all pieces of hardware, all that kind of thing. And, uh, What's it called? So to me right now, it's still a scary thought to go full time with all this. Let me see. Uh, TV and people don't understand. It's what happens, you know? Yeah, dude. Uh, that's the thing when uh, uh, and that's like another one I've been kind of hoping to push is that 
we need to get more non-vapers, non-smokers. Because those are the people that we really need to get their attention out of anybody. Like, I appreciate all you guys being on here, but, like, and I feel like an asshole for saying this. I really do, so don't get me wrong. But, like, even myself, I am one of the, I include myself in this. But we follow, like, you know, the Stew Crew. We follow Grimm. We follow, like, Basardo. We follow, you know, Vapor Trail Channel. We, we follow all these, like, YouTubers and, like, things like that. Uh, that. Yep, there you go. There are, yeah, coils are incorporated in deeming regs, and you need a tobacco manufacturer's license to distribute in shops. Sadly, it's a problem I have ran into as well. Yep, see what I mean, dude? And that's the thing. But uh, we all follow all these YouTubers, and we're fully aware of advocacy, and we're fully aware of what's happening. But we all kind of run in circles. Like, seriously, I could probably go on the stew on Friday, and you guys would be hanging out with me right there. Uh, on Mondays, you guys are hanging out with us on the Omis. If we go on Grimm's blog, uh, you know, we, we probably hang out there together too. A lot of us hang out and just chat it up and all that kind of thing. And it's awesome. And it's cool because, you know, community. And I love that bit. But we need to expand outside of our circle. And that's just something we need to push for a lot more and be able to do a lot more. And, you know, this is that kind of situation. It just feels very needed and... I think we should have been doing that a long time ago, but it's just we we need we can't stop the fight. We can't give up just cuz, but we do need to do something bigger than ourselves at the moment. And that's where I was talking about earlier that we need to stop the petty fighting. We need to stop just being so pissy about who said what to who, what company did what to what. It's not worth the fighting right now cuz the whole infighting just separates us, it tears us apart and we we're going to lose everything just with all this stupid fighting. And that's just the, the thought I'm going to leave you guys on. Honestly, I didn't realize I've been going on for almost an hour. And I like to cut this at about 45 minutes. So we're going to call it. And I appreciate you guys for being on here and just enjoying some time with me. Uh, go check out uh, clownvapes.com. I got tons of stuff on there if you guys want to buy anything from me. I know I have IVC juice. Uh, I'm still working with uh, Ryan and Dan about getting a code that I can do. Yeah, I'm wearing an Ibanez shirt. <laughs> I am actually a musician originally. Uh, I started playing guitar at 16, played at a bunch of bars and clubs here in like three or four different bands. Uh, I actually have a degree in music. I am uh, audio production, which kind of where I get the, the fancy gear <laughs> and all that kind of situation. But uh, yeah, go check out Clown Vapes. My personal vape group is Clown Crew with uh, K's on both Clown and Crew. And uh, I think I have a link down below somewhere in the description. And uh, go check out Vaping with the Omis group. We got lots of stuff going on over there. Uh, go check out James's channel. The dude has been doing lots of fun stuff. You know, he just posted his Bennett Tool Customs video earlier today, which... I'm probably going to go watch that because uh, me and him are in this weird competition of who puts out what, what first and all that kind of thing. So I, we tend to not watch each other's videos unless uh, we're, we're not reviewing something similar or we already did the reviews for like the product. So it's one of those weird, weird things. Um, Lethal, go check him out. He's going to be on live here in like maybe an hour or so. I'm not sure if Lethal, drop your, your link down below again, buddy. Thank you for dropping some links for me. I appreciate that. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, yeah, Wolf Bite Vape Radio. Uh, we are on Saturdays at noon, Sundays at 9, and replays on SoundCloud. All of them, I think Frank says he needs to keep up with the posting and all that. And I have started posting the videos of our recordings onto my channel. And I'm trying to make sure I get those out on Thursday. I'm about seven videos behind. So there's a bit of a lag, but that way you could still catch up on the show on SoundCloud. Uh, yeah, vaping with the Omis. Poon Sauce is doing uh, what's in the news. Poon Sauce later today. Uh, I think it's at seven my time, seven CST. Oh, two hours. Yours is at seven p.m. Okay, so I don't remember what time then. Like, uh, is uh, what's in the news? Poon Sauce. You guys might be competing. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, be on the lookout or put both of them. If you have dual screens, put both of them and just type on both. <laughs> Seriously, share the love. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, I think that's everything. 
Uh, yeah, because I know IBC, go check them out. Go check out Poon Sauce's channel, Frames' channel. Swaggins has a great series called Would You Look At That? And if you haven't checked it out, you're going to laugh your ass off because it's about the most obscure uh, vape uh, review style ever. And it just cracks me up. I need to actually add his link to, to my description because I keep forgetting to do that. And Poon Sauce's because I, I haven't added both of theirs yet because it's more recent kind of thing. But yeah. And, uh, yeah, as always, guys, uh, seriously, thank you. And as always, mix on, vape on.